visiting Westerville. Hello everyone, my name is Allison and this is Jared and today we are going to be talking about a very serious topic that we are very passionate about. We're going to be talking about genetically modified organisms also known as GMOs. Does everyone know what a GMO is? Yes, ma'am. Yes, my name is Hannah and I was confused on what exactly a GMO is. GMOs are plants or animals that have had their genetic makeup changed or altered. They are altered in ways that wouldn't normally occur in nature. The GMOs that are currently being sold have had their genetic makeup changed so they can produce their own pesticides and or withstand herbicides that would normally kill these plants. What are herbicides? Herbicides are normally used to control and kill weeds. Allison, why don't you tell them what the FDA has been saying about GMOs? That's a good idea, Jared. The FDA has been very concerned about GMOs and report that they are inherently dangerous and can also create the following problems. Poisons, allergies, new diseases, nutritional problems, gene transfers, and much more. We will get into more detail about each of these a little bit later. Well, if the FDA is saying this, then what are the benefits and some concerns of the GMOs? Some of these so-called benefits of GMOs are more nutritious foods, so they are claiming that the food tastes better, plants and crops require fewer environmental resources, less pesticides are being used since these plants and crops can defend themselves, there has been an increase in food supply, so the food will last longer and has become cheaper, the plants and crops are also growing quicker. Even with all these benefits, the concerns are a lot more important. Some of the main concerns are the food is losing nut nutritional value, creating food that is causing allergic reactions and or toxic, tons of health concerns, and the fact that genes are moving from one plant to another. You mentioned that there are a lot of health concerns. What exactly are these health concerns? Great question. There has been seven serious health concerns as well as many others that are just now coming out. One of the concerns is organ damage. So the herbicide Roundup has been associated with damage in the liver, kidneys, heart, adrenal gland, spleen, and blood flow systems. All of these signs were shown within 90 days of being tested, which is very rare. Usually it takes about two years to find a lot of damage and or problems. Scientists predict that if there was a longer study done, there would be even more damage and problems coming out. Sterility and infant mortality is also a problem. In a study done with rats and hamsters, there were many problems shown. With the rats, the ones that were born from parents who were fed genetically modified soy died within three weeks. Whereas the control group that was fed natural soy didn't have any problems. With the hamsters, there were three generations on a maximum soy diet that became infertile. These hamsters were slower to grow and their pups had very high mortality rate. Birth defects come out as well. These defects are noticeable in the brain, intestinal tract, as well as the heart. Scientists have found these defects are related to genetically modified soy that was doused with Roundup. Allergies have had a significant increase as well. After a year of having genetically modified soy in Britain, soy allergies went up 50% in a single year. Then when the genetically modified soy was introduced to the United States, our peanut allergies doubled. Cancer has a huge risk with GMOs. In areas that use pesticide Roundup, there have been over 300 cases. Rats that have been fed genetically modified potatoes that produce their own insect insecticide <laughs> develop pre-cancer cell growth and had organ damage. Milk is a huge problem because cows that are treated with RBGH have high levels of the hormone IGF-1. This is a higher risk for breast, prostate, colon, and lung cancer. Farmers in the United States have been using this to increase their milk production, not knowing the effects it has on everyone that consumes their milk. GMOs are also showing an altered structure and function of the liver. This is causing an altered metabolism and cell changes that can lead to accelerated gain. Along with this, they have found that there has been an immune system dysfunction and increase in diabetes. Mice that were fed GMOs had over 400 genes different between them and the mice that were not fed GMOs. The main genes that were affected were the genes that controlled insulin regulation. The animals that were fed genetically modified food had intestinal immune system disruption. So, a lot of these descriptions that you provided talked about animals being tested. Do you know what all the outcomes were for these animals? Yes, actually we do. When genetically modified soy was fed to rats, both males and females, they encountered some crazy changes. The female rats that were fed genetically modified soy and had babies, they usually died within three weeks, whereas the control group that was fed natural soy only had a 10% of their babies die. The babies from the genetically modified soy parents were also smaller and had issues when they were trying to become pregnant later on in life. The testicles of male rats that were fed genetically modified soy changed from pink to dark blue and their sperm was altered. When you took a closer look at the embryo's DNA in these rats, it was completely different than their parents. 
When buffalo were fed genetically modified cotton seed, they encountered many different complications as well. Some of the complications include abortions, premature deliveries, infertility, and prolapsed uteruses. Here in America, we have pigs that have been eating certain genetically modified corn, as well as cows and bulls that have had complications. When the pigs ate GM corn, they became sterile and had false pregnancies, and some even gave birth to bags of water. With the cows and bulls, they experienced a lot of infertility. Also, in the United States alone, there has been a lot of low birth weight babies, infant mortality, and infertility. These problems are continuing to increase each year. Wow, this is interesting and good to know. How are we supposed to know what genetically modified foods are unhealthy, though? It's very hard to know since it is not labeled in a lot of countries. A lot of common genetically modified foods are fruits and vegetables, such as apples, papayas, potatoes, and squash, corn syrup, which is used as a sweetener in many foods and drinks, corn starch, which is used in soups and sauces, soybeans, corn, and canola oils. These are all used in snack foods, breads, salad dressings, and mayonnaise. Sugar, that comes from sugar beets. In the United States, cotton, corn, and soy are the most genetically modified food that we know. That is a lot of food that I wouldn't think of. I'm glad you're informing us about this topic, but why do you think people need to know what is in their food? You have obviously provided the reasons, but why do they need to know? Good question. We believe that people need to know what they are eating because GMOs are not only affecting the individuals that are consuming them, they are also affecting the environment. This is because of the changes that the organisms are experiencing and how they are being used to grow quicker, as well as the use of pesticides being cut back because these plants are producing their own. What exactly is a pesticide? You've mentioned it a lot and I'm not sure that I, as well as others, know exactly what it is. A pesticide is a substance that is used to kill insects and other harmful things for plants and animals. Oh, thank you. So do you by chance know what any doctors have to say about genetically modified foods? Yes, actually we have four different views that we think are very important. First, Dr. Amy Bean, who is an internal medicine specialist from Michigan, strongly recommends patients eat a strict, non-genetically modified food diet. Dr. John Boyles, an allergist from Ohio, has been testing allergies for a long time, especially soy allergies. He is now telling people to avoid it and not eat it as much as possible because of how dangerous it is from, genetically, from being genetically modified. Dr. Jennifer Armstrong, who is president of the AAEM, said how doctors are seeing how the genetically modified foods are affecting their patients and are questioning what the correct and right care is for each of their patients. Finally, Pushpa M. Bhargava, a world-renowned biologist, said that the genetically modified foods are a major contributor to the deteriorating health of individuals in the United States of America. Wow, that's interesting and good to know. So since you've provided all of us this information, why exactly do you think it's a global issue? And what do you think should be done about it? My personal opinion on the matter is, why not label? I believe that we as humans have the right to know exactly what it is we are eating. If genetically modified foods aren't bad for us, then it shouldn't be a fight or hurt to label our foods. After doing my fair share of research, I will be definitely changing to a more organic diet. Food is our body's fuel, so it is important to eat right. Fueling our bodies with GMOs has been proven to lead to allergies, diseases, and much more, which can cause our bodies to shut down. These negative effects impact individuals nationally and globally. People need to have a choice of whether or not they want to eat GMOs, and labeling is the answer. Going off what Allison said, companies are not putting what is going into the food that they produce on the labels because they know people would not buy the product knowing what it contains. This is a problem because all the ingredients that their product contains are extremely harmful not only to the human body but to the environment. The animals being tested is an unethical issue in itself. They are showing a variety of results that prove that we should not be intaking this horrible ingredient. In conclusion, humans are rational autonomous beings and deserve to know what they are eating. You nailed it, Jared. Thank you for watching today. If you have any further questions, you can email them in and we will get back to you. Thanks and have a great day. GMO. Well, it's an organism that's been genetically modified. This means scientists combine the DNA of one or more organisms for some specific genetic feature. Usually this entails engineering plants with toxic bacteria that kill bugs that try to eat the genetically modified plant. Currently up to 88% of corn grown in the U.S. is genetically modified, 91% of soybeans and 88% of cotton are GMO crops as well. These raw foods are then widely used in food production processes. Nearly three of every four processed foods contains at least one GMO ingredient. It's almost impossible to avoid products containing GMOs. 
Everything from soda and juice to canned tuna, breakfast cereal, even milk and delicious bacon can be genetically modified. Currently, though, GMO products sit camouflaged on the store shelves. Consumers have no way of knowing if the food they are eating is genetically modified frankenfood or not. GMO labeling was, however, legally mandated. Consumers would have the power to choose for themselves. Because after all, you do have the right to know what's in your food. In the den, there's an example of it labeling for non-GMOs. Wow, hey Al, I heard something about GMOs and I didn't know what's in my mouth. This is what we need on all of our foods. We need labeling. stress from viruses, bacteria, adverse weather, soil conditions. Lenestra has sued more than 800 family farms over patent infringement. How do you patent life? I, I mean, honestly. This university used to get most of its scientific funding from the USDA. Now it gets it from corporations. So we adjust. This is science that's saving the world. Now, almost 90% of corn, more of soybeans that are planted in the United States are genetically engineered. So it's just in everything. You're not now. You're acting paranoid. You said it yourself. You're having delusions. So you're saying my son is making it up? I don't think he's making it up entirely. It's a psychological disorder, Miss Kessler. How can there not be any other independent studies that, that, that matter? We're the guinea pigs, Sophie. And your son is the independent study. Get it together. 